Welcome to World Energy. Today on Reality Check, we're talking about commodity prices. Over the summer, the price of oil shot up to nearly $150, and natural gas was at $12, $14. Today, oil is trading in the low 40s. Natural gas is down to five. So is the world really awash in oil and gas, or is something else responsible for this volatility? I'm Richard Loomis, CEO of World Energy. I'm Jim Poplava here at the Daily Transcript in San Diego, and I'm president of PFS Group. Well, Jim, one thing can be said about energy prices. If we look back over the last 30 years, they go up and they go down. What makes this cycle any different? I think what makes this cycle a lot different, Richard, is the degree of which oil shot up, especially as we got towards uh, early summer when the price went right through 100, went through uh, 125, and then got up to close to $150. On the other side of the coin has been the rapid decline of oil prices, where on the day that you and I are talking, uh, oil prices are down right back down to about $42 a barrel, back to where they were in about 2004, 2005. No, that's correct. I mean, over the summer, we were screaming that the speculators were driving the price of oil. Do you think they have as much pressure pushing it down as they had pushing it up? I, I believe they do, because just as the, the price went up uh, very quickly, especially after it shot through 125 in late June and went towards that $150 range, there was nothing really at that time that might have justified, other than bottlenecks, the price rise up to 150 Likewise. Uh, Richard, if I would have told you uh, a Russian invasion, two hurricanes, uh, two revised reports on uh, depletion rates would send the price of oil down to 40, you would have probably thought I was crazy. Well, there's a lot of talk about the commodity, Jim. We can't get around that we're saying that the demand on the oil and gas is going down. I've got the EIA report here in front of me that shows over the last three quarters, U.S. demand for oil has gone from 19.8 million barrels a day down to last quarter, it was at 1909. Yeah, but hold up, Richard. I mean, if, if we're looking at oil demand, you got to look beyond the United States. Uh, media reports in the evening, they're showing people uh, filling up their SUVs again. I'm a sailor. I noticed in the, in the bay on weekends, the motor boats are out again now that fuel prices have dropped down tremendously. So, but you know, if you're looking at demand, you can't just look at the United States, you have to look at global demand. And on a global basis, we haven't seen a, a decline uh, in energy. It's still going on. Energy consumption is still rising. Well, let's look at that for a minute. Uh, according to the EIA, the um, global demand starting in uh, beginning of 2008 was at 86 million barrels a day. Uh, according to them, in the third quarter, it was at 85.22. So consumption globally in the beginning of the year was trending down. Uh, production trending down as well. So if you look at that, I mean, the only increase I see here is go forward, where in the fourth quarter, total world consumption is jumping, jumping up to 86.9. But is that enough to stop the price of oil from going down? Well, certainly, if you have uh, declining economies, as we're seeing in OECD countries today, whether you're looking at the United States, Japan, and Europe, uh, energy consumption is closely tied to economic growth. Mm -hmm. But uh, and also in Asia and other parts of the world, we've seen a decline in the economic growth rates. But China's economy is still growing, maybe not at eight, uh, or maybe not at uh, let's say ten, eleven percent but it may be growing at four or five percent. And then on the other side of the coin, we're only looking at the demand side, and one would have to ask, has it dropped enough to justify a price drop from 147? So either the price at 147 was artificially too high, or the price at 40 is artificially too low. Well, and I think in the news and online and out on the internet, I hear that this theory now of peak oil must just be gone uh, because the price of oil has come down and we're certainly meeting our supply. Well, let, let's, let, let's stop there because you have the EIA report. I have the 500 page document, the IEA report, and they've had two of them. They had their mid-year outlook, which they released in uh, early August. 
uh -huh. and they they raised the depletion rate from four percent to five percent. So that was one report. Then the report that they uh, released in uh, November, which was their 2008 outlook, after studying 800 of the world's largest oil fields, which account for probably 75% of our oil consumption, Richard, that depletion rate is 9.1%. And the figures that, I don't know what you're reading from the EIA, Mm -hmm. But the IEA report says we're at an energy crossroads, that if we don't do something quick, given these depletion rates, they're estimating that it's going to take about $350 billion of uh, annual investment in the developing world just to get depletion rates down to 6.4%. And That's I can tell you do. right now... That's tough to do, period. But it's certainly tough to do when all of our production companies are starting to cut their exploration budgets. I've you know, got some interesting numbers, though. Yeah, if I in, look in at fact, demand in Canada, uh, it's going up. Beginning of 08, it was at 2.37 million barrels a day. In fourth quarter, 2.4. Uh, if I look at Europe, Europe seems to be holding steady. It was at 15.2 in third quarter, 15.3 in fourth quarter. If I look at Japan, Japan is trending up much harder, 4.5, 4.6, 5.38. Uh, so it's going up. The, um, you know, if you look at China, when you mentioned that earlier, China was sitting at 7.7 .7 million barrels a day at the beginning of 08. And at the end of 08, it's sitting at 8.29. So I think the numbers are trending like you're describing. I think more interestingly, though, total world production is coming down. And I think this is where the two reports kind of get on the same page, where I think the EIA is underestimating is consumption go forward, because they're projecting almost flat for 2009. What does well, the IEA say about 2009? Well, the IEA is saying that uh, overall global demand should grow by uh, roughly about 2.3%. Now, they've revised that as a result of some of the economic numbers that have come out. But they're still seeing an increase of over 170,000 barrels a day of consumption globally. But more alarming, Richard, is they're talking about what's happening to supply growth. And the supply growth is having more difficulty keeping up with demand. And I think uh, uh, one of the things I want you to do is put up a, a chart here that we have of oil discoveries because every single year we consume roughly about what 30 billion barrels of oil uh, a year or a little bit more than that and Richard we're only discovering roughly about half of that you have governments around the globe right now you've got the United States you've got the incoming Obama administration talking about a stimulus package I heard the word one trillion dollars today you've got China that's going to spend 600 billion the Europeans are going to spend $250 billion. You have central banks slashing interest rates. So we have governments around the globe that are acting expeditiously to increase or try to offset economic weakness. At the same time, I've got a report here on rig count uh, where our rig counts are dropping by two or 300 rigs, especially uh, as it applies to natural gas. Well, in looking at natural gas, the EIA shows natural gas is rising. It's one of the bright spots in the, um, uh, on the production side, both on consumption and production. If I look at consumption on natural gas, uh, last year we were at 67.1 MCF, and now today, or middle of this year, we're at 67.4. So we know natural gas consumption is rising. At the same time, we're pulling back on production. So I think these two things are going to collide. Well, you know, here's an interesting story from uh, Bloomberg, and this was on Monday. It says, Contango, that means future prices of oil are much higher than spot prices, pay most in decade as Shell Oil starts to store crude. In other words...